seven women survived the unthinkable. If she is able to look up to me, I can help her in a very positive way. One of them shackled in a coffin-sized box. There were actually handcuffs on either side of this bed. Another held captive for nearly 10 years in the infamous House of Horrors. I thought about putting rat poison in his, his beans and then spraying like pine saw in his eyes. A third, kidnapped at 13, found bound and gagged in the basement of this home, her mother and brother murdered. Knowing that you can never say mom again, like it's the worst feeling in the world. My name is Denise Huskins. Katie Beers. Gina DeJesus. Kara Chamberlain. Sarah Maynard. My name is Alicia Kozakevich. Now these women, survivors of the nation's most notorious abductions, have been brought together by Elizabeth Smart. Nothing prepares you for being kidnapped, and nothing prepares you for life after. In 2002, she was kidnapped at knife point from her Salt Lake City home, her family pleading for a safe return. It's time for her to come home. The then 14-year-old endured nine months of physical and psychological torture at the hands of Brian David Mitchell and his wife, Wanda Barzi, before she was rescued and reunited with her family. It's real. <laughs> it's real. Elizabeth is, is happy. She is well. And we are so happy to have her back in our arms. This is Jamie Kloss's missing poster. This is a sisterhood that's unlike any other. Now, in a lifetime special, Smart Justice, the Jamie Claus case, Elizabeth Smart and the other members of this tragic sisterhood offer their unique insights to help 13-year-old kidnapping victim Jamie Claus. We want Jamie to know she is one of us. My mission is simple, to help Jamie move forward and heal. Jamie Kloss is just the most recent high-profile kidnapping that horrified the nation. She was randomly spotted at a school bus stop in rural Wisconsin by 21-year-old Jake Thomas Patterson. According to authorities, after seeing her, he knew that was the girl he was going to take. Patterson broke into the family home, murdered her parents, and abducted Jamie, taking her in the trunk of his car to his home in Gordon, Wisconsin, 70 miles away. An Amber Alert was issued. For weeks, volunteers looked for signs that Jamie was still alive. She was held captive for three months. Jamie telling authorities she was forced to stay under his twin-size bed for hours without food or water. But on January 10th, when Patterson told Jamie he was leaving for a few hours, she seized an opportunity to escape. Jamie is the hero in this case. There's no question about it. Investigators say Jamie fled from the house, I mean, running into the arms of Jean guy, Nutter, a former really social nice worker who was out walking her dog. She spoke to ABC's Alex Perez. When I saw a young woman approach me. She was crying and said, I need help. I don't know where I am. I'm lost. Please help me. When Nutter asked the frightened teen where she was coming from, Jamie pointed at the house across the street. I kept telling Jamie, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Wanting to put some distance between them and her captor's house, Nutter brought Jamie down the road to the home of Peter and Kristen Kaczynskis. It was like seeing a ghost for real. It was, it was, I mean, it took my breath away, you know. And I'm still, it's kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around it. Incredibly, Jamie was able to give a name and description for Patterson, even providing the authorities with a vehicle description that ultimately led to his arrest. In cases like this, we often need a big break, and it was Jamie herself who gave us that break. Jamie is now living with her aunt. A month after her escape, they released a statement. Jamie greatly appreciates each and every gift, as well as the many cards and letters, the statement said. The many kind words have been a source of great comfort to her. In March, Jake Patterson pled guilty to two counts of homicide and one count of kidnapping. He now faces the possibility of life in prison and will be sentenced in May. The way he targeted Jamie was eerily similar to what happened to Elizabeth Smart in Utah. I was out clothes shopping with my mom when my captor saw me, and then as soon as he saw me, he had decided that I was the girl he was going to kidnap. In the Lifetime special, another connection is highlighted. Sarah Maynard's kidnapper also killed her family. I think your case is probably the closest to Jamie's. Of course we feel days, you know, where we feel hopeless and we want to give up. You know, of course, I'm sure all of us feel that way, but we can't. 
Losing my mother is one of the hardest things in life. You have right. to... I just feel so bad for you. I'm sorry. I just can't comprehend what you had to go through. And you're amazing and strong. Thank you. I just want you to know that. Elizabeth Smart visited Wisconsin, offering support to the community. I just want you to know that Jamie is an extraordinary young woman because despite the horrors that she saw, despite the terrible things that she suffered, she still escaped. I mean, that takes more strength than I can ever imagine. Smart and the other abduction survivors hope that by speaking out and reaching out, their stories will help Jamie move forward. I'm a social worker and I was wondering what can social workers do to advocate for families and children who are victims of trauma in any way? Well, obviously securing them is, is a really good thing to begin with, which I'm sure you already know. Um, but to helping them to understand that they do have options, being able to make choices again for yourself as a victim, as a survivor, is so empowering. But as the women know all so well, it's much more complicated than that. I feel that when we're rescued, that, yay, happy ending, it's all over. Literally, the newspaper said that, yeah. happy ending. Yeah. It's not an ending. This isn't, the book doesn't close and I just vanish. A lot of people have asked me, like, why didn't you do this? Like, if they knew what they would actually do, they would kidnap. I was physically chained up, but I was also manipulated and told, you know, if I ran, he'd kill me, he'd kill my family. I ultimately felt like those manipulations were much stronger bonds than the actual chains that I was held with. And while Jamie is now safe at home, this sisterhood of survivors knows this is just the first step in recovering from the unthinkable. Smart Justice premieres tomorrow night on Lifetime. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.